What up, Raffalitos? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we want to talk about the no confidence motion and the legal cases that have been conducted in Guyana as a result of disagreements over the outcome of the vote. Stay tuned. Oh, this is my, this is my, this is my day. I'm ready to take it on, come what may. So the no confidence motion was passed in Parliament on the 21st of December 2018. And the Speaker of the House passed the motion based on a 33-32 vote in favor of the opposition. Now we're not going to go back over the shenanigans about why Charandas Passad voted with the opposition, why he defected from the coalition to the opposition team. What we're going to talk about is the arguments that are being made in courts based on a legal opinion of Mr. Nigel Hughes. So a few days after the no confidence motion um, passed, Mr. Hughes on Facebook declared that the motion should not have been passed because there should be a 34 to 31 victory before the motion could be approved. Now there are 65 members of parliament and what Nigel Hughes is arguing is that to win a majority of the vote a party has to win half of those votes plus one which means half of 65, which is 32.5, plus 1, which is 33.5. And so he says that you have to go past 33.5. And since you can't win half a vote, you need a whole vote. That 33.5 becomes 34. And so he's arguing, and he's made this argument on behalf of the coalition government, that a victory would require 34 votes and not 33. And so the victory would require a 34, 31 um, division of the votes as opposed to 33, 32. And so this went up to the uh, courts. This was taken to court by the a coalition government and it was rejected. Right? Judge Yon Cummings rejected this. Um, this interpretation of the coalition of the coalition's interpretation of the vote. However, they appealed. So it went to the appeals court and in an opinion in a decision of two to one, the appeals court approved the coalition government's argument that a victory requires thirty four votes and not thirty three. And so we're in a position now where we're going to take this, not we, but the opposition, the People's Progressive Party Civic, is going to take this case to the higher authority, which is, and the highest authority, which is the Caribbean Court of Justice. And again, they're arguing that there is no precedent for a 34 to 31 victory in Guyana when a vote of no confidence is brought. And so far, the country has been in a kind of holding pattern, a kind of stall, just like Brexit, because nothing is happening while this argument is making its way through the courts. And we don't know how long it will take to complete these court cases. In the meantime, the approval of a no-confidence motion requires that elections be held in 90 days and those 90 days came and went on March 21st 2019 and so here we are in a situation where government should have been should have called an election and the PPP is arguing that the government should no longer be in office and therefore there is a breach of constitution there's a constitutional crisis However, what has saved the day is the appeals court ruling that the no confidence motion did not pass. 
So guys, that's the current situation in Guyana. That is the state of affairs. Tell me what you think about this situation and what are your concerns about the no confidence motion. Now to be sure, there will be elections in a few months. This has been promised by the government and in any case, the regular schedule for elections would have been sometime in 2020, right, within a few months anyway. So I see no need to, um, to be concerned or to be upset by the current situation. You know, in Guyana, everything is no big thing. So we don't really take these things seriously. However, there have been protests on the streets and the opposition is trying to uh, create a kind of atmosphere of crisis. And that is not good for the economy. It's not good for business, it's not good for investment, it's not good for the growing um, oil and gas industry. And so, in fact, it's the reason why I have not been commenting on this um, case. It's also the reason why I haven't really expressed an opinion one way or another, except to show you the math. If you look at the precedents, if you look at, for example, the no-confidence motion in Europe, right, and in other parts of the world, um, Theresa May faced two no confidence votes and in the case of um, the Tory party they have an odd number of uh, party members and it was fully acknowledged that to prove to pass a no confidence vote against Theresa May they just needed one more vote in other words, those who voted for the motion just needed one more vote than those who voted against the motion. So requiring a margin of three votes to pass a no-confidence motion in Guyana based on some lawyer's interpretation of what an absolute majority means, a word that is, words that are not used in the Constitution, seems to me just like more politics and more lawyering than what the law says. Tell me whether you think the no confidence motion should require a 34 to 31 uh, margin, that is a three vote margin for victory, or whether it should be a one vote margin like it is everywhere else in the world. Leave a comment below. Like and subscribe this video if you like this kind of content, and share this video with friends and family around the world. Remember, you can support this channel on Patreon and on PayPal, and very soon there will be merchandise that you can purchase online to commemorate this stage of growth in Raffle Nation. Later!